Hey all, how you doing today? Hope you're doing well. Um, today we are going to continue the vault. Um, but first I'd like to say please like, subscribe, and share these videos. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm trying to grow this channel. So anything you can do to help uh, would be appreciated. So um, with that, as I mentioned, we're going to be going into the vault um, with the CDs starting with the AGs. Um, I don't know if we're going to get through all the AGs today. I don't think so. No, we're not. <laughs> because one of the bands has, um, oh, eight or nine um, in here. So um, what we will start with is the band um, Against Me. This is a uh, CD um, searching, searching for a former clarity. This came out in 2005. Um, these guys are considered punk rock, uh, I guess. They um, became a little more... They had some leanings towards pop music um, later on. Nothing much here to see on the inside, just some black and white photos and some lyrics. Um, this one had uh, about seven songs that I liked quite a bit. Uh, Miami... Um, Mediocrity gets you pairs. The Shaker, um, from her lips to God's ears, the Energizer was my favorite song on here. Uh, I think it was about Condoleezza Rice. Um, these guys are very um, politically engaged, which isn't really my cup of tea, but they do write a, a lot of catchy songs. Um, this is my introduction to Against Me, and they did have a couple other albums: um, Reinventing Axl Rose and uh, Eternal Cowboy. Uh, I was not a huge fan of those, but um, this is my first introduction. Uh, original Press on Fat Rex. This is a promo copy. If you can see the barcode there, if you have a CD in your collection and there's a hole punch through the barcode, that means it's a promo copy um, that was given to a record store potentially, and they punch that code because the label usually gives um, copies to record stores to like play in their store and, and whatnot, but they don't want the record... Uh, store to sell these but um many record stores do um it's kind of poo-pooed by record labels but um happens happens all the time you can get new releases for cheap that way too so um next up's when i think this one i think is the first time against me actually charted on billboard um but when this album came out new wave um they really exploded uh, the song thrash unreal um, was played on I think MTV quite a bit when MTV still showed videos this came out in 2007 um, I like it quite a bit just because it's extremely catchy um, they they got a lot of flack uh, for this album uh, here's the inside they got a lot of shit because I think they signed to kind of like a major label type deal after having these punk roots for a while um, they got called sellouts by their fans. Um, Tom Gable, who's now Laura Jane Grace, he was Tom Gable when this came out. Um, kind of, it really seemed to hit him hard. I think he, he had, I read an article somewhere where he had um, seen a poster of his band, um, like a advertisement for a show in the town he was in and someone wrote sellout over the top of it and it pissed him off and, and he ripped it down but if you hear these songs they are extremely poppy and catchy um it was produced by butch vig extremely popular producer it's very glossy it's very thick very um, bubble gummy at times especially um thrash unreal um new wave um, Born on the FM Waves of the Heart are extremely um, catchy songs. So I like it for the catchiness. A lot of the songs on here, um, Up the Cuts, I liked quite a bit. And New Wave, it was kind of talking about the music industry, which was kind of ironic that these guys were, um, you know, you're basically talking Up the Cuts is basically how bands at the time, um, it was 2007, 2008, a lot of people were just hacking stuff together and uh, making up sounds that record companies thought everyone wanted to hear. So it's kind of ironic that it was a criticism of that at the same time they signed to a major label and it apparently did exactly what they were singing against. So I don't know if that was a little irony in there, but um, it is a catchy album. Um, 
catchy songs, etc. Very poppy, like I said. Um, put some links below. You guys can check them out. But I, I do, at this time, at least enjoyed um, Against Me, and I still um, come back to this album from, from time to time. Uh, and then the last one I have here is um, Against Me, White Crosses. This came out in 2010. Uh, I think this might have been their last major label um, release. I can't really remember if they if they had another major label release after it. But this was a continuation, in my opinion, of um, New Wave. Uh, very catchy. Um, some of the songs weren't quite as catchy. Um, or poppy, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Um, High Pressure Low was a pretty good song. Um, White Crosses, I Was a Teenage Anarchist Because of the Shame, Suffocation, were breaking up. Those first five are all very poppy. Could have easily been on the radio. I don't know why um, they didn't get a lot more airplay with this one. To me, it took the, the pop to a whole other level. Um, and then the song Rapid Decompression is a, a great, great punk rock song, in my opinion, even though it came from um, Against Me in uh, 2010. I don't remember the significance of this album cover, but um, it's it's a good album. It's, I'd say it's got seven or eight good songs out of ten. Um, good punk rock, in my opinion. A poppy punk, I guess. I hate to say punk rock, because when I think punk, I think a, a completely different thing. But... Um, that's my uh, Against Me collection. I, if you get these three, um, they had the one that came after Transgender Dysphoria Blues came out after that, and that's when Tom was transitioning into Laura Jane Grace, which is um, who she is today. Um, I didn't like that album. It wasn't catchy. Um, Shape Shift With Me came out in 2016. Was not a fan of that album, though. The catchiness just went away, and it seemed to be uh, just a platform for Lauren, J Laura Jane Grace to to talk about her transgen transgendered journey, which is, you know, if that's your thing, that's great, but um, you got to have the songs to back it up. Um, and I know there's a lot of Against Me diehards that, that love everything they put out, but those albums just uh, didn't do much for me. So that's Against Me. Um, next, we're going to talk about a band that a lot of you metalheads probably know. Um, I, this is probably one of the first, I don't say first black metal bands, probably atmospheric black metal bands The guy that I ever got into. Um, I liked the atmosphere around the, the atmospheric black metal. Obviously it was just that feeling of being, um, in the woods in the winter. I kind of got that from, um, obviously the Swedish and, and Norway type black metal, but I'm not from that area. Um, I'm in the Midwest where we do get some brutal winters, um, and these guys are, are from America, so it, it just seemed to make sense for me. So the band we're going to talk about is um, Agalock. I'm sure you all know and love them. I was a big Agalock fanboy for a while, and I bought pretty much everything I could get my hands on at the time. I'm probably going to offload some of this stuff because it's not really... Some of it I just don't care for that much. Uh, it's not some of their best work, but it had their name on it, so I bought it. Uh, I have a special box set of theirs I will showcase next um, when I start going through my vinyl uh, collection. Oh, it's right here, right there. So I talked about 13th Floor Elevator. So once I get to the AGs in my vinyl, um, I do have a very rare Aglock box set um, that I will display. But first is um, Pale Folklore. CD version on the end records. Uh, this came out in uh, 1999. I'm pretty sure this was a reissue. Um, not my favorite Agalock uh, release, but speaking of atmospherics and coldness, you can see the, the artwork. Very wintry. Um, this album doesn't have any of my favorite Agalock songs on it. I'm not a huge, I was not a huge fan. Of this album this is when they were just a two-piece I believe John Baum I believe is his name was the kind of the, the ringleader of Agalock um, but yeah this is not my favorite album by them it, it feels very disjointed to me and kind of all over the place and you know it was their first album so they're trying to find themselves and, and get their voice so I it makes sense uh, to me on why it sounds that way um, next up we have an EP of Stone, Wind, and Pillar. 
and P-I-L-O-R. This came out in 2001. Um, this also came out on the end records. I believe this is also a reissue. I didn't care much for this EP. Uh, they have some Henry David Thoreau text down there in the corner. Um, again, very disjointed to me, uh, but it was, um, you know, lots of woodsies, pictures and whatnot. Um, more instrumental than anything here. Um, they were still, as I mentioned in the previous album, trying to find their voice. Um, not a huge fan until uh, this next one came out. This is probably one of their more popular um, releases. This one's called The Mantle. Uh, this came out in 2002, also on uh, The End Records. Uh, I always liked the cover. thought it was kind of cool, you know, speaking of the outdoor woodsy type vibe and those atmospherics um lots of black and white in here um they had gotten a couple other band members by this time i uh, believe yeah this is jason walton uh william he actually um when i had a record label, i keep saying when i had i still have a record label he actually um, did some mastering for me i just kind of uh, reached out to him um, and there's, I believe, John Anderson said, Hey, I think you put out an advertisement on Facebook or something when I was on Facebook and said, um, Hey, I, I see you do mastering. Do you do mastering for any kind of music? And he said, Yeah. Um, Send him some files and he did some mastering. So that was kind of cool to strike up a slight relationship with, with him. He seemed like a really down to earth dude. I've never met him in person, but um, they were three piece at this time. Um, the Mantle, I think the best songs on The Mantle, I'm trying to remember, um, In the Shadow of Our Pale Companion, many of you probably heard I Am the Wooden Doors, um, The Lodge, You Were But a Ghost in My Arms, all great atmospheric, um, kind of doomy black metal, if that's a proper um, title for these songs, but yeah, The Mantle by Agaloc, great release there. And I believe that. I don't think that's original press either. Once they got they got popularity later on during some of these albums I'm going to talk about. And they started, you know, repressing shit. Um, speaking of, this is a repress. This is the Gray EP that came out in 2004. Uh, I don't think this is an original press. Um, they were pretty much firing on all cylinders um, at this point. Um, and this was... Um, a couple of remixes if I remember right yeah um, this has the lodge on it but it is um, a, called dismantled I think it's more of a stripped down version and then Odal um, which is the other song that was remixed um, by um, one of the band members Jason Walton uh, Williams that I mentioned earlier um, an EP two songs 20 some minutes um, Again, not not straying too far from the Agaloc path here. Um, probably not something you need to, to seek out, but um, still pretty decent nonetheless. Um, next up, probably their biggest album, their most popular. Um, this is also a repress, Ashes Against the Grain. Uh, this came out in 2006. Uh, probably my favorite Agaloc release. Um, it came in a, this uh, slip case, which is kind of kind of cool. Um, but this was the actual original cover in the back as well. Um, white is the falling snow. Black is our citadels burned against the sky. Um, not much to show you on the inside here. Um, but this is probably what many consider the best Agaloc uh, release um, that's out there. Um, Limbs is on here. Um, what other songs were on here? I'm trying to remember. Um, Not Unlike the Waves is probably their most popular uh, song, but the inside doesn't really have uh, a lot to, to show there. Just lots of mystical type um, pictures. Um, four band members at this point. Uh, I believe, I can't remember when uh, one of the band members, uh, they, they had some members come and go in, in the beginning stages, and one of them actually lives... Um, in my town, um, I, I had no idea about this. He's actually a um, university professor um, near me. And he had bought, um, I put out an album by a band called Omatir. 
uh, from Portugal. And, you know, I, I sent a thank you note to the person not knowing who it was. And he said, yeah, man, um, huge fan. Um, I actually live in your town. Uh, huge fan of that release. I thought it was one of the best black metal albums of the year. I'm like, wow, thanks. That's weird that someone in my town, you know, likes this album. Um, black metal is not an extremely popular genre where I'm at. Um, but through some digging, he, he had mentioned, I think, he, he was in Aglock. And I'm like, yeah, right. Uh, but I did some research, and he actually is a, a professor and, and um, very smart individual. A professor of philosophy um, was in Aglock. I don't get into the drama of why bands break up. But uh, it was just cool to know that, you know, a band that I'd admired for so long, that the guy, one of the guys that made some of this music lives 10 minutes from my house. It was uh, pretty weird. Um, next up, this is more of a comp. I'm not going to talk much about this. Uh, this came out soon after. This felt kind of like a money grab, but um, again, I had to buy it. It's um, Agalock, the Demonstration Archive, 96 to 98. Um, just has some different songs on it. Again, nothing to uh, write home about here, but it had Agalock's name on it, so I had to get it. Um, next up, I remember getting this album for Christmas one year uh, actually the year it came out this is marrow of the spirit came out in 2010 uh, my wife got me this digipack uh, for christmas uh, this is uh this is where they started to falter a little bit in my opinion um it just i don't know if the band was having turmoil at the time there's some innards because those of you that don't know they did eventually break up um but the production on it was kind of muddy, in my opinion. It could just be my ears. I do have shitty ears. Um, but they escaped the weight of darkness uh, into the painted gray and black like nothing were all um, great songs that I liked. And you probably can't see, you can barely see the songs here, but it is embossed on the, the back and their logos right here on the front, if you can kind of see that. So um, this came out on Profound Lore Records, by the way, a label I've talked about out of Canada. Um, a good release, just the, the production on it I thought was extremely, uh, extremely muddy. Um, next up was kind of a rarity. I don't even know if any of these exist now. This was, again, an EP. Uh, this was called Faustian Echoes that came out in 2012. Uh, again, this has a little... Um, I keep these things. It's probably a collector nerd thing, but it came out on the side. Um just a, a digipack this was one long song of it's like 20 some minutes if i remember right again wasn't anything to write home about but it was it was agalock and i bought it um, and i still own it so um bits and pieces of the song are great melodic heavy and other parts are kind of boring um so yeah if you're going to do a 23 minute long song that's a little overkill in my opinion you really have to to nail it to to do it correctly um, last but not least is their final full length. Um, this is The Serpent and Spear, Sphere that came out in 2014. Um, this is the last thing that they put out before they uh, broke up on Profound Lore Records. Um, the front here is kind of cool. The um, inside comes out and you can you know kind of change with the way the, the cover looks. Um, had a very come with a very thick booklet. Uh, some lyrics and photos and whatnot of, you know, I think snow and rivers and streams and the band pictures. Um, this was their last release. Um, they had Aesop, I can't remember his fucking name now, drumming on this, and I think they did on Marrow of the Spirit too. Uh, he's been in a lot of other metal bands, but um, Birth and the Death of the Pillars of Creation... Um, the Astral Dialogue and Celestial Effigy are good songs. The rest of this um, just didn't do much for me, but I do own it. <laughs> um, being the collector nerd that I am, I like the cover quite a bit. Actually, when I get to the AGs and talk about Agalock, you'll see the... I have a limited edition vinyl version of this. This was her song, Swan. Swan song? Swan song. <laughs> Swan song, so to speak. They, uh, they dismantled... Um, I want to say a year, two years after this, they had, you know, if you follow any of the metal blogs in 2016 or so, um, you know, when news broke that they they were no longer a band, 
Um, everyone wanted to know why. Um, a couple of guys went on to form um, Corada, and I'm looking up here because I have their box set. Um, it was um, John Hom um, went on. He still manages Agaloc to agree. I get emails every once in a while when they have a new T-shirt out or something to sell. Um, I don't know if they'll ever get back together to do anything. Uh, I don't know why they broke up. I don't know if it, you know, maybe they'll mend the fence sometime, get back together and, and put an album out or at least tour like all these other bands are, are seeming to do these days. Hey, let's mend the fence and make more money than we ever did before and uh, do a tour of, you know, Ashes Against the Grain, playing it from start to finish or something. I don't know. Wishful thinking. I never did see them live. Um, I was going to go see them in Chicago uh, on the Serpent the Sphere um, tour, and it just didn't work out. Um, so sad I didn't get to see them. Hopefully they will tour again. But um, that is my Agaloc CD uh, collection. All this stuff. I will probably put some of this on. Discogs, I think my kind of a purpose of going through this this stuff too for me is kind of evaluating do I really want to keep this shit or um, pass it on on Discogs and sell it to, to someone else that might appreciate it more than I do. I mean, I've, these CDs have literally been sitting behind my head here, as you can see right, right above in there somewhere. Sorry, it's opposite of what I'm looking at, but yeah, right in there. Um, it's a carousel I have behind me. Um, I don't know. Some of these I would like to keep. Some of them I don't really have a purpose for. So um, I have a link up top in my um, my banner there on YouTube for my Discogs. Um, that shit that I sell. Um, I do buy and sell music sometimes. It doesn't mean I like the music that I'm buying and selling. It just happens to be something that I have. Um, so something up there interests you and you're a, a subscriber of this channel um let me know ping me and i'll, I'll cut you a, a deal you can make an offer on discogs for those of you that don't know but um say hey I'm, my name is joe blow whatever your handle is on youtube um, and I'll, I'll try to cut you a break on some of the stuff i'm selling so and um, that's it for today guys um it is december 31st so happy new year uh, stay safe out there. Um, as my old boss used to tell me, keep it between the ditches. Um, don't drink and drive. But if you have to, keep it between the ditches is what he always told me. Uh, living out in the country, it was kind of a, a joke. But um, stay safe out there. 2020 has been a fucking terrible year for many reasons. Not just COVID, but um, 2021 starts tomorrow. So uh, let's uh, start tomorrow on a good, good note new foot, all that fun stuff. So um, I'll probably, I might do another video today. I'm um, continuing my vinyl collection. We'll see how squirrely uh, I feel later. So um, thanks a lot for checking out the channel, guys. Again, if I don't do another video, have a, a happy new year, have a safe holiday, and I'll catch you all next time. Later.